Hello, Marks. Hello, Ao. Hello, Pappy. Not much, just waiting for any potential reveals, which they might drop in just a couple minutes. And then we'll also be looking at our uh, Sword of Six Star Talia. Hello, Tweak. Yeah, hopefully we get hopefully we get Fiddle Six revealed in a minute. <laughs> hopefully. Hello, Dre. Hello, Brat Rose Toy. One minute, yeah, they they've been doing all the reveals at eleven my time, which is in a minute, so hopefully that's when we when we get fiddlesticks. And yeah, hopefully they actually show us star powers, starting deck, all of it. Which it could be really interesting for fiddlesticks because he might well he probably has his own support package. Um he was probably one of the like the last champions that they actually were developing cards for before they completely switched over to Path of Champions. So I think this will be one of the very few times we actually get a new champion with an entirely new uh, support package of cards, which could be pretty interesting. We could really get brand new keywords, which isn't going to happen very often. So yeah, hopefully... Oh, it's 11. I'm going to go refresh, see... If I see anything. All right, not seeing anything at the moment, sad. Hello, Long, welcome. Uh, it is one thing that's a little sad is they're sometimes inconsistent with when they actually post stuff. So yeah, might not happen immediately. But if not, we can showcase our six-star Talia that we honestly haven't played very much with uh, at all. Oh, I see a notification. Interesting. Okay, well, I'm... They made a post. I'll pull it up here. I think people will be surprised. Alright, so... Don't stop a breathless kiss from whence you'll wake your thirst, my dears. Is it's to sl slake. Sate, I wonder. So we have Evelyn. Did not see that coming. Did not see that that coming. I guess Evelyn is Evelyn's the other champion we're getting, and then potentially we'll get uh, we'll get Fiddlesticks tomorrow. I didn't really, I wasn't really online much over the weekend, so I did not see any, any theories. Evelyn is interesting. So she's the champion that is going to be getting uh, the six stars from, because we know one champion from the existing roster is going to be uh, doing that, so it makes sense. Fiddle, Fiddlesticks, Alawi, Diana, Darius, Evelyn. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that they were potentially trying to spell something, but I didn't consider the F for Fiddlesticks. Uh, 
uh, Darius is here for the D in in Fiddlesticks. Okay, so we know Evelyn is going to be getting updated. This can be really good. It makes sense for them to go to, with a, another demon. And so, yeah, it's very much then confirmed that it's yeah going to be Fiddlesticks if this is spelling out fiddle and if they're doing it with a demon and it's October and they did the whole rhyme with counting to 10. Now it is Monday. Are they also going to show us? Hmm. Maybe later they'll actually show us her support package since it's it's Monday. We only have two more days. Right loves me to do Ari and then they do Evelyn. They did Morgana with Constellations. I'm hoping that they actually take a look at Evelyn and fix her main issue. So here we have Evelyn, and she actually has a pretty big issue with her star powers. Right here, the first time you kill a follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. Now, while this is, in theory, a fine power, with Evelyn's level up, you don't want to kill your units because she can only level up and down if you've had six or less units die of your, your own units. So you don't want to kill your own units at all. So the two star is fighting the whole core of how you're playing Evelyn. So hopefully they adjust that. And also there's some things in the starting deck that like the crawling viper worm wouldn't be bad to get that out of your deck. Even Phantom Prankster, it's only like a half synergy. Is it too slake? Does Evelyn work for Phil now? Not actually sure. I'm gonna. I don't actually really think I've heard the word slake before. Okay, so it means quench or satisfy one's thirst. Interesting. That's actually not a word that I've heard before. So it's like weird. Yeah, so Evelyn, I'm hoping then this is something they've said before is when they update a champion for their six stars, sometimes they'll look overall at their package and try to update it a little bit. Evelyn could really use a couple things being tweaked changing around one or two of her cards in her deck, and then also adjusting her second star power to not try to push you towards killing your own units could be pretty, pretty good. Also, she is a Rune Terra uh, champion. So if you have a Rune Terra star crystals or Nova shards, be aware of that. Sadly, Rune Terra is one of the regions that I don't have that many crystals for, I don't think. Yeah, I only have 10 which isn't great, although I'm sure they'll reveal or do a package for her, a bundle. Playtime recently got vulnerability as one of the upgrades for six cost spells. One if that's an oversight. Interesting. Her four star being summoned to husks would actually be a nerf. If, if they make that her four star and they don't change her star power, her second star power, then yes, that would be actively a nerf if they gave her the upgrade that game start you summon two two husks unless like her six star they could just tweak it so that she doesn't have an issue with there being a cap if you can just kill your own units without there being any consequences then it would be fine but it seems like it'd be hard to work crawling viper is terrible remove it yeah it's not it yeah it's really bad man we're probably getting two rune terror constellations then most likely, unless they try to do Fiddle Six for Demacia. I think I've got some extra rune crystals. Do I do want five star Aatrox? Yeah, same. I doubt Fiddle is anything but Rune Terra or Shadow Isles, right? I mean, they could make him Demacian, I think. But yeah, going for Shadow Isles or Rune Terra would make more sense. They must do something with her six unit dead thing. Yeah. What are the chances of Fiddle being Runeteria, Demacia, or Dual Region? I think it's possible. Well, do 
do they ever do dual region with Runeterra? I think all the dual region, I don't think any of them are Runeterra, right? I don't think that's the case. He really needs to be Targon for the region balance. Targon once again getting boned. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not surprised. I kind of figured that was gonna be the case. Cause yeah, I figured for it being October, them already having these plans, I didn't think that they were gonna be doing it. Honestly, we might not get a new Targon champion till next year. Cause next patch is November, which is gonna be the Arcane one. And with Arcane, I mean, we might get like three to four champions actually. So there's a chance. I want Aphelios with Path of Champions. I just hope they give her something like Biggle Dust or Chase them Down, not Husk Power. Yeah, the Husk Power, if they don't change anything, is going to be bad for you. Because her two star is bad. But Evelyn getting the Constellation will be really good. Because for one, just getting extra starting mana on Evelyn is fantastic. So that alone is going to be a massive increase. You know, Evelyn's already a really good champion. Her getting a Constellation... She should be excellent. Crazy thing is that instead of Runeterra, Fiddle is all regions. We might get two new champs next month. We might get Mel's mom from Noxus and Arcane. Yeah. So as far as what they revealed, they just showed us the fact that it is Evelyn, which also means that it's almost guaranteed that it's Fiddlesticks, since with the F for Fiddlesticks, all the champion uh, spell out uh, what we're getting. Or they all spell out Fiddle. Now, they haven't revealed her support package yet, or they haven't revealed like how they're updating her, adding her constellations, anything like that. They'll probably do that later today. So maybe in like uh, the next hour or before then. Some frames drop there. That's not the best. <laughs> All right, so Evelyn's great. I'm sure we'll look at her more later when they actually reveal some more stuff. I think we'll take a look at our Talia. I hope they update Evelyn to be centered on buffing husks for the next ally instead of champ level ups. Yeah, that could be nice. Hello, Toast doing Lissandra with Swain. Four star, what relic should I use? And should I go for Remitter? Uh, I think with Swain, you don't have to go for Remitter. If you can go for the turn one Swain build, it is pretty solid. Uh, you could also just go, if you need only rare relics, go for like the Gatebreaker and double Riptide. That's still very strong, even if you don't have any epics. Is he up to tomorrow on Wednesday? Uh, the update is on Wednesday, and yeah, the Battle Pass ends tomorrow. What champ besides Fiddle starts with an F? Yeah, Fizz. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, we don't have the five stars. We're kind of pretending that we do with this build. But what we do have is her six stars. So when ally attacks, it plays Threaded Volley. So this is the effect that Talia plays when she's leveled. This is an elemental skill. So deal two damage to your blocker. If it's dead or gone, do damage to the enemy Nexus. This is really nice because it's just giving you more damage overall because your units have overwhelm so extra damage just even if you don't kill the target that th this is hitting it's just making your overwhelm hit harder so this is actually pretty good and then your spells and skills deal one extra damage for each landmark so if you have landmarks on your board this will hit harder now the build we'll try out first will be this right here so the icon of val here so the volley bear relic your elemental spells and skills deal two extra damage so increasing all of our threaded volleys we're playing. And then we're going to go for Starforge and Luminous so that we can essentially have full six stars with getting the extra starting mana. So this is what we will uh, try here. Although we'll quickly drop an ad. So if you need to go to the bathroom, go get a drink, anything like that, go ahead and do that right now. We'll pause here while we figure out where we want to go and uh, 
and player. What's Talia's relic? I don't think Talia has one. Uh, the Spire Landmark works really well for Talia too. Yes, that is one that I did actually try with her earlier. And yeah, that is also another one that is good. You get another landmark on your board and it can help increase also the damage of your six star or she can try to copy it. So yeah, that one is also uh, solid. Got 200 wild fragments burning a hole in my wallet. So ready to use them all on fiddle. Yeah. All right, where do we want to go? Oh, and yeah, we're not going to be doing any of the, the nightmares or weeklies because we need to save that for later. For when we get our legend level increase. I Meanwhile, it feels like my wall is going to get stolen by Evelyn. <laughs> uh I guess we might try might try going up against Lissandra. It's been a minute since we've done Lissandra, actually. Yeah, we can go ahead and try this out. Alright, I think we'll go and do Lissandra for our six-star Talia. I still don't have a single five-star champion. I focus on upgrading everything I can because I don't like seeing the shiny effect all the time. Yeah, it is pretty nightmare or pretty annoying. Are we doing the weekly nightmares today? No, we are not. Since we're going to get our legend level increase, I am saving all of the nightmares and weeklies until the patch drops and then I'll clear them all. That way we can get the legend XP and try to level up a little bit faster. Good morning, clear wings. All right, support champion. Sandra, that's kind of funny. Uh, frozen Tomb, so this is going to be free. We do have ways to try to count it down. Akshan is just going to probably immediately, immediately die. But he is going to be 5-5 five, five as far as stats. That is pretty big right away. And he would give us more landmarks. I feel like grabbing Lissandra could be funny, though. Although, in Tombing... Entombing Lissandra is kind of like the enemies of Lissandra is kind of pointless. Playing this would only help them, actually. So actually, that would be probably bad. Sure, I think we'll grab this here and give us a landmark. Can be good. Uh, stacked against them, converging timelines, haunted halls. More cost reduction could be solid. We are going through Lissandra, and so we're normally going to get a lot of cards. Sure. All right, gold chest. So four cost, give enemies negative two, round and deal two damage to me. Frostbite. When I'm summoning someone a copy of me. That would give us extra draw. That'd be interesting. <laughs> let's buy one of these and let's buy a home turf here so we're summoning this at the start of the game it's then going to summon another one that's going to give us two extra draw three landmarks at the start of the game making our uh six star do a ton of damage i think let's do one reroll here uh predict summon Another game start summon me. I feel like that's kind of funny. Sure. And normally with ones for home turf, I try to get at least two. That way you don't draw to the start and it doesn't trigger. But yeah, we're summoning like four landmarks at the start of the game without doing anything. I think that's pretty funny. Alrighty then. Uh... We could go up for the remitter, try to get 
Spell Shield. Spell Shield is not bad. But Spell Shield is also kind of boring. So while it is smart, let's go down, go for the harder route. Anivia is also very frustrating. But let's try to challenge our Artelia. So let's go for Heart of the Fluffed. Actually, let's check here. Frost Gathers. All right, Heart of the Fluffed with I Am Inevitable. Which I Am Inevitable could be pretty bad for our our six star since we're going to be damaging it. Mr. Toast, are we going to see Eve Constellation today? I would think so, yes. All right, let's get rid of both of these because we know we're going to have them on the board immediately. All right, so we could drop this first. We can then play this for free. Yeah, I think let's go right here. And we could play this for free. It would refill our mana. Sure. Also, the fact that these are both counted down is actually pretty crazy. And we could go for a Curator, but let's actually go here. All right, so let's attack like this. And then each one of these is getting a threaded volley that's dealing seven damage. All right, not too bad. A lot of damage. And I kind of feel like we don't actually really need to play anything. Uh, that's a little annoying, but not that big of a deal. Like, we could override the Warlord's Palace. But again, don't really feel like it's needed. GG. These are all doing five damage. All right, I think this is gonna be a pretty crazy run with the amount of the amount of landmarks we're immediately summoning. The harder route with four landmarks and game stars really powerful. League will happen tomorrow when update happens. I won't be able to drop the leaks, so if you have to look out for Marshall's tweets and stuff. But I wish I could drop the leaks. Yeah, we'll be we'll try to check Twitter a bunch to see what's what's going on. Destroy an allied landmark when you manage him, steal four. I think we'll go for the Ruinous Acolyte, but we don't really plan on playing any of those, really. So we could go for Talia, but I kind of like Akshan. But Talia would... I mean, we could potentially play her round one, because round one we're drawing like four cards. So we could play her super cheap. Yeah, I think we'll go for her. Uh, spells chest, item chest. Both of these are annoying, and they both have I'm inevitable. Uh, I think we'll go down here for the troll scavenger. Can't check Twitter because it's blocked by country. Well, we're kind of circumvented that for you. All right, let's get rid of one of the copies of Talia. See, Hartley is just free.
So we could copy the ancient preparations, although we don't have the attack token. So if we had the attack token, I think I would copy one of these so that it could count down this round and we could just get a massive attack in. But since we're setting up for our attack next round, I'll actually go ahead and copy the hibernating rock bear. And we're level. Uh... Alright, so we can drop this for... Some blockers. And sure, let's drop our auction just for... A free kill. All right, looks pretty good. Next patch is insane. Evelyn, Fiddle, new battle pass, animation speed, more legend levels and champions. It's insane. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Speaking of a good time, this attack is going to be massive. Oh, it's so much extra damage. <laughs> uh GG. What a great day. This rumor Twitter is going back on Wednesday, the day of the patch. Interesting. All right, exhaust, forge of tomorrow. I don't know if we really care about this. I feel like it's going to crowd up our deck and we'd rather have a better one because we're never going to play a six cost card. Uh, lucky find. Sure, I guess we'll go here. All right, item chest. <laughs> sure, I mean, we're, our board is getting too crowded, which is kind of a problem, but I also think it's kind of hilarious just how many landmarks we're summoning at the start of the game. <laughs> so sure, let's let's try that and let's go for Porous Sled with all things grow cold. I think now we're summoning like five landmarks at the start of the game. <laughs> just landmarks who needs units. Yeah, pretty much. Sadly, again, we don't get the attack token, which is rough, because we could probably just OTK. Yeah, five, five landmarks at the start of the game. Uh, let's... That's a pretty big, scary unit. Uh, yeah, we'll drop this here. Together, we are stronger than stone, faster than the wind. Tour guide to Leah, only landmarks on board. We need our one ability to count down. All right, so we can buff up our Talia. Yeah, so I guess we'll pass for now. We really want to get our one effect to count down our landmarks. So just top deck it. Sounds good. Ah, oh, sad. I suppose we could go for a Desert Naturalist and open up one of them. So replace one. And I there was activate the other. Because while the landmark sitting on our board isn't the worst because it's increasing our damage, we still want to be attacking with as many units as possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, GG. It's just so much damage. We should do this more often. Yeah, I haven't played a lot of Talia with this upgrade. I've been saving it to really experience with you guys, but this is this is crazy. 
All right, so we don't really need this for Farsight because we're already summoning it. I think we'll go here for the Unraveled Earth. This game more cost reduction, giving us some draw. Could be solid. And yeah, let's go for a power, I think. Let's see what we can get. Allies of plus one, best defense, haunted hall. So best defense could be solid, especially if some of our games go a little bit longer, because then this can essentially work like a heal. Uh, extra just flat damage is good for just trying to rush down the enemy as fast as possible. Um, thinking about powers we'd really like, we would like Trifarian. That would be very nice to have, and we would like the Rally. We have four rerolls. While best defense isn't bad, there's other things I'd rather have. So I think we'll actually do a reroll here. When you summon a one cost ally, grant it 2 2. Sometimes Akshan could be a one cost. Normally, our Talia were playing for a zero cost. Our Clocklings would be getting an extra 2 2. And we are getting two of them. Could go for Afterlife for another landmark. In general, I think this is just going to be a little bit too inconsistent. Because we want something to try to help all of our units. Let's try another reroll. Game start, draw two. We already are having a lot of draw. And Feebling, actually, this could be very solid with our six star. Because our spell or our skill will hit them first, reducing down their power. So they actually won't be as likely to be able to kill our units. So, yeah, I think we'll grab here. Not exactly what we wanted, but it's solid. Now let's go for She Who Wonders. I do wish they made a Mage Seeker Champion that can control the spells the AI uses. Yeah, I mean, uh, Galio could also work like that as well, even though he'd be more of uh, formidable. But yeah, I, I wish they had that too. Let's get rid of one of the Talias. Nice. Okay. Imagine possibilities. We have the attack token. Let's. We'll drop our Talia and. Oh, we could. We could use our imagined possibilities first. I think we actually will. If we could use this and use the predict to see if we're going to get another imagined possibilities, we could then draw it. So yeah, it's a bit of a risk, but we'll try this first. All right, so we don't see an imagined possibilities. little sad. Oh well. My journey won't end until I'm through weaving it. Point the way and I'll make the way. What do you think? We'll see if we got lucky with our predict, especially since this is free. Now we just have to wait. Not quite. I think let's drop our auction, get rid of one of their blockers. I don't need rules to know good from bad. And let's attack and get a nice little OTK here. GG. It's so much damage, I love it. I love how Lissandra becomes a cape walk after you get to six stars. Sweet, sweet revenge. I mean, it is the six star, but also we got very lucky in the shop. Like, summoning five landmarks at the start of the game is kind of crazy. <laughs> I love how the rock sounds like a machine gun. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's just get more copies of Talia. This effect probably is never going to trigger because we're just playing in round one, but we like getting more of our champion. Since this is a pretty crazy run so far, we'll try to go down for the, the harder route. So let's go for Messenger.
wonder what Chilia's second favorite type of music, because rock is obviously number one. Uh, hey, Keiru. Keiru. Yeah, could be close. Uh, we'll give her the payday. I think we'll hold on to the others. We like to have doubled imagined possibilities, just so we can count down our rock bears fully. I think we'll play this. Hope, hmm, hopefully this works. Because this could just buff up our champion even more. But hopefully it doesn't make her replace one of them. <laughs> Some effects like that can be a little messy. Okay, yeah, so we're having to replace a landmark. So yeah, that's not going to work. We could replace one of our rock bears. But I think we're fine. Anyone knows if there's a reveal today? Uh, yes, Evelyn got revealed already. Have you played other Riot games? I played League of Legends back in the day. All right, let's drop this here for... Gain some more units going. Uh, sure, we'll just attack like this. So not quite able to end, sadly. Yeah, we potentially could have tried to uh, summon another Clockling with copying Talia, but here we will get three giant rock bears. Oh, it's so massive. If we got Trifarian, each one of these getting a strike off, it would be so much fun. We'll probably just pass here, to be honest. We don't really want to play and override any of these. They might attack and kill our Clocklings, but if they do, it's not a big deal. Calm mind and open heart, greet the night. Yeah, they don't want to attack. Trifarian and Titanic power? Yeah. I love how we're just filling the stack with effects. Also... This means if we can actually fill the stack, Lissandra won't be able to play any of her spells other than burst ones. What Piltover champ is best at six stars? Um, I mean, a lot of them are really good. I think Jinx, Echo, and Jace are all excellent. And then I think Heimer should be pretty solid. And then I think both Vi and Caitlyn, I think Vi is probably better than Caitlyn. This will probably make us overdraw. But, sure. I feel like for P and Z, pretty much all of them are really good. Caitlyn's definitely the worst, I would say. Heimer's Bandle, right. He's technically counts as Bandle. I always forget that. I would say it really comes down to personal preference, though. Uh, let's go for Jubilant Poro. More draw, draw makes Clea cost zero with stack deck. Yeah. I mean, she's already normally costing zero, depending on the order we're playing her. Uh, let's get rid of both of these. Whenever you have some with Homecoming, you'd like to have them in your deck. Otherwise, if you draw all copies of them, they don't get summoned. I cried when Victor said he's the arcane and transcended. Kate is not as strong, but fun as fuck. Yeah, Caitlyn is great. Okay, so we're not quite overdrawing. <laughs> nice. Uh, they have the attack token. Together, we are stronger than stone, faster than the wind. Point the way, and I'll make the way. All right, we'll use this for our blockers. And then also make sure everything is activated next round. 
Uh, sure. Let's see what we can get here. Another spell shield. Um, I guess quick attack's fine. Oh, did you get in Use me. All right, not too bad. SDG saying homecoming and my braid going to the four mana R recall spell. <laughs> Did I say homecoming? My brain is Arified. Oh, homecoming from the yeah, the effect on the spells or the landmarks, right? <laughs> I love this. GG. You think we're getting an animated trailer for Tomorrow's Champ? I think it's possible. I don't think it's likely. I think it's more likely that that doesn't happen, but I, I wouldn't say it's impossible. I'd say there's definitely that possibility. We could go for Frozen Thrall. Uh, so we could have six landmarks on the board. <laughs> the problem is it's just going to be in the way. It's just going to be a problem. Uh, it's not even it's not even good. Yeah, like it's, it's not going to help us. We're just going to be replacing it. Ah. Uh. Sure, well, it's it's bad. It's not a good it's not a good decision, but we'll do it for the memes, even though it is not going to help us at all because we're never it's never going to count down. All right, let's go for power here. Easy prey is not going to go off. Uh, Phalanx, we don't we have like one self targeting spell. There is welcome gifts, but we want to get something a bit better. Undying the first time an ally dies, revive it. I mean, that's probably going to be better than whatever we're going to reroll for. Sure. All right, let's see here. What do we want to cut? Uh, we're probably never playing this card, so sure. I think we'll probably cut that. All right, item chest. Normally our champion's gonna cost nothing, so this actually isn't gonna give us cost reduction because it's based off the cost that we paid for the champion. So I guess we'll go for payday. All right, shop, can we get something? Get something good. Crescent Strike, when I'm summoned, grant allied champions landmark spell shield. It is something we can play for free. That's humorous although normally normally they're not going to have anything also it says buy items for your cards i don't see an item here like we could just what is this what am i buying so that is funny i don't think it's normally going to be able to hit anything buy nothing for 45 gold yeah i just Thanks, I guess. So even though the first one's not going to do anything, I think I will get it just because if we drop one of these later, like a zero cost capture. Sure. I suppose. Uh, let's go for the shape stone because that actually could be really good. This is just stupid, but I kind of want to do it. Oh, uh, sure. Not that it's a good idea at all. Give an enemy negative two, an ally and an enemy strike each other. Yeah, I think I actually will get it. Even though going off twice isn't necessarily the best. Who's better, Talia or Kaisa? Uh, probably Kaisa, I would say. This run is so dumb and fun. Yeah. Uh, Crimson Aristocrat, healer. All right, we're gonna go for Anivia. 
but ad is about to drop so if you need to go to the bathroom do anything like that go ahead and do that now and yeah we'll just go ahead and load into Nivea this run is illegal yeah I mean, I pretty much took some of those upgrades just so I could say, like, have a thumbnail where it's like six landmarks turn one or something like that. Game start capture two units. It'd be great if we were going up against Swain, but the enemy doesn't really capture units, so it's mostly going to be pointless. It is going to be good later, though, that uh, if we want to drop it, we can just get some captures off immediately. Tour guide Talia and the landmarks of Sharima. <laughs> Thumbnail having one big home turf on Talia's head. Yeah, I'll have to do have to do something. Because yeah, Talia has a lot of home turf in this one. The classic do it for content. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's absolutely pointless at the start versus Lissandra, but having it sounds so dumb. Yeah, and it's going to be something that we're probably going to hold on to this one right here because we can drop this later in the game and it's just immediately capturing two units is going to be pretty good. Also, the fact that this has such a long countdown is actually going to be good because then they're locked up for longer. They are my landmarks and I am theirs, pretty much. All right, everyone should be back. Uh, we're going to get rid of both of these. We're actually going to hold on to the Frozen Thrall. We don't actually care if we draw both of them and we don't have it get summoned at the start of the game. Because holding on to a double capture is pretty nice. <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. Alright, so we have the attack token... I think we'll go ahead and drop our Talia. We'll replace this one, and I think we'll copy one of the ancient preparations. My people, and I am Capture the Watcher? Yeah, we could, actually. So, let's, oh, that, mm. I hate my mouse sometimes. <sighs> oh, that's frustrating. So, my mouse sometimes will, like, double click. Oh, it went on the right one. Okay. I thought it chose the wrong option. And I was, like, not happy. I think let's actually drop our Frozen Thrall to capture their Anivia. I feel like that could be solid because these aren't going to count down this round. So, yeah, let's drop this here. A new era begins. What are they going for? Because if they don't do something to counter us, we will. OK, you're hitting my one unit with spell shield. Thank you. Because we can drop this here. And we're probably going to end round one. All right, we got Scout. So we're doing 46 damage just with Talia. It's pretty solid. I do like that with this one, even if you have landmarks on your board, the six star that is, they're no longer useless. They're now still contributing to your damage. That is really nice. GG. That might be the easiest uh, Anivia run I've ever had. Anivia can be a pain. She normally just slows you down so much, but that was fantastic.
Manifest a landmark that has been destroyed this game and summon it. I think we'll actually go with this, because we could use this to get more of our capture ones, potentially. Could be fun. Sure. And I think let's cut a card. Uh, again, we're probably never going to play this. There's a chance we play the Desert Naturalist. All right, Lissandra. At last, my time is at hand. Well, Lissandra with LeBlanc and Rally Banner works. Good luck to Lissandra trying her Ice Shards. All those skills on the board. Exactly. It's going to be so nice. We can attack and Lissandra won't be able to play most of her spells. It should be amazing. Oh, it's so many things. So a little bit worried about having to drop our Talia immediately, but she is going to get Spell Shield, so there is that. I think, yeah, I'll replace this. Copy this one here, just since we will be able to attack round one. Means so little when family means so much. I will weave my own path. I will bury the world in ice. Alright, so we're just... How many cards do we have? We have nine. Oz attacks on the Santo Charger. I'm um, sure. We we're trying to see if we could maybe get... our countdown spell. Although we could do this here. That's not necessarily terrible. Sure. Okay, so sadly, didn't get our countdown spell. So yeah, they will be able to block to stop some of our effects. So yeah, we didn't get too lucky, but... Still, we're doing a lot of damage for round one. All right, so we could go for a desert duel. The one bad thing is that it triggers two effects, but the good thing with Talia is we don't need to play a lot of cards. It's like we could try to go here. Would take us down to one health, which I don't know if I want to go that low. Yeah, I think let's just go here. <laughs> they just kill it immediately comes back uh could go for auction although we could also leave it yeah i feel like we're fine we're gonna get a whole board of units it's okay i do look forward to seeing what lissandra tries to do here So we're going to fill up the entire stack. And so other than burst speed spells, they won't be able to play anything. Okay, so they were able to play a burst speed spell there. Although that's still a little rough. All right, so the fact that they got two blockers at burst speed is a little rough. Definitely. 
Ah, uh, sad. But we are killing all of their units. So it's not necessarily the worst. And none of our units are dying. So, sure. But yeah, that tough coming in pretty clutch for them. Ah. Uh. We just have such a full board. There's nothing really we need. This also wants to summon the landmark, which we don't have room for. Yeah, we're kind of suffering from our own success. I suppose we could drop this and kill one of their frozen thralls. Just to not let them have another unit. Yeah, it's kind of one issue with Talia is once we've attacked, we kind of don't have anything to do. Alrighty. All right, let's go right here. Uh, so this would give us a bunch of draw. We don't actually want that. Give our champion spell shield, hibernating rock bear. Uh, this does have a countdown three, which is a little rough. But this will just make us overdraw like crazy. I was hoping we'd get our other one. Let's actually drop this first. Will this effect trigger? Don't want to die? Don't do terrible things. So he gets buffed up afterwards. <laughs> Double Warlord's Palace. Okay. Interesting. And honestly say I did not see that one coming. All right, we'll go ahead and pass here. All right, let's try to replace that. Try to copy this one, although we are at nine mana, or they're at nine mana, meaning they will be able to do a Buried in Ice, which would suck, but they also would have enough to do a bunch of Frostbites right now. Still, a Buried in Ice is pretty likely. Let's... We don't want to risk giving them the opportunity to play some slow spells. The Scott Scout. All right, we're just going to try to attack. All right, this is going to give us the attack token again. Also, he's going to get resummoned, I think, from our legendary power. Not terrible. Well, they can drop their watcher, so that's fun. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this here. All right, so we could attack with this guy, getting our scout attack off. I 
think let's drop this here, see what we get. Alright, we're trying to get one of our ones to count down our landmarks. So yeah, that Watcher is a bit of a pain, because he can just block whatever. Yeah, the watch will just be able to block and kill whatever we do. But I kind of feel like we just need to attack. And the scout attack won't really do anything either. That just gives the watcher the opportunity to block both. So yeah, let's just attack and go for it. Yeah, that tough is kind of a pain. Alright, oh, we'll go ahead and end here. Oh, look, bear to nice. Uh, we'll let that go through. Uh, we don't have our one guy to count down landmarks, which is a little sad. Deal 9 to a unit is pretty nice. Let's drop this here, get at least... At least one unit counts down. Alright, so we could kill that one. Oh, so this is going to get died to the Ice Shard. But, yeah, let's go ahead and drop this here. Uh, so he'll just die immediately. We don't have a lot of room here. Honestly, the fact we got double Warlord's Palace, which is pretty weird, really was not good for us. That is not good at all. So let's destroy an allied landmark here. Alright, fun. This might be an L, possibly. Akshan sabotaging us? Yes. Also going to refresh Twitter. Uh, nothing yet. Alright, so dropping Akshan is not really going to help us. Doing a scout attack with this guy also I don't think will be the best. Uh, we could actually drop this here just for some... That could be funny. <laughs> okay, that, that's, that's funny. Uh, let's go ahead and attack like this. We played that to get extra landmarks on our board so we could attack with them. And I think we'll save this to wait to see what they do. But let's attack and get our Jarvan going. Alright, so that game obliterated again. Uh, she's dying. Let's see. So they still can play their, their Ice Shard. Let's try to buff up this one here. Yeah, sadly all of our epic items are hitting this guy. Alright, so Predict is kind of funny. <laughs> What's our one card that we have left? And yeah, we don't have any way to like shuffle cards back into our deck, which is unfortunate. 
So we're kind of toast. We have, yeah, we have one card left, which I know that's the one thing you guys can't see. Jarvin out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little bit, a little bit unlucky. With Thalia, you are a very unit focused deck. And so the enemy is very easy to just mess with you. We do have Cataclysm. That's something. Hmm. I'm just seeing if there's any way we could actually... Suppose let's drop this here. Let's try to buff up our Jarvan at all. Fearsome quick attack. Let's go for the spell shield, actually. And let's use a Cataclysm. This is the weakest target. Uh, yeah, I suppose let's go for it. Yeah, I didn't see anything on uh, Twitter yet. Yeah, we got some good damage down. Almost, not quite. We still have, uh, we still have another run. Uh, C is zero. By the way, why can't I use a Pilt Over Nova Crystal on Heimer? Uh, cause he's not a technical Pilt Over champion. As far as the Constellation materials, he is Bandle City. You almost made the watch deal zero damage. Almost. All right, let's go again. Hopefully we get a little bit luckier. Will there be a new battle pass on this update? Yes, every update there's supposed to be a battle pass. Also, we I don't think ever got our capture um, capture two spells. So that's frustrating. Yeah, the Capture Thrall, we never pulled it out before, so that was a little sad. And we're also not getting our Countdown Landmark, which is also a little bit sad. Uh, we'll drop to Leah. We'll advance this one to get another big Rock Bear. Onward, everybody. The horizon calls. If I stumble, I have to Earth to catch me. A dark cloud looms on the horizon. All right, so they have two mana. We don't really have anything to help us too much here. I think we'll use this just to try to buff her up a little bit more. Ah, uh, sure, we'll go for one one. Like threading a needle. All right, so. This will be doing a lot of damage, especially since she's leveled already. Each one of these is hitting like a truck. Like, nine damage from each one of them. Killing Lissandra is always, like, good and bad. Like, it's great to get her off the board, but then they can just drop her again and get another Watcher going. <laughs> or another, uh, Frozen Thrall. All right, I think let's drop this for the draw. Uh, Varus, interesting. Alice attacks on attacking Sand Soldier. Uh, yeah, I think we can go for Varus. Okay, Desert Duel isn't terrible. They also didn't drop their Lissandra. 
I think let's get rid of the Inquisitor. Help. Oh. Hit the wrong button. <laughs> oh, rip. All right, Desert Duel. He, we don't want him counting down their Frozen Thralls even more. Also, he's not going to damage our Talia too much. All right, well, that makes blocking simple. So we could go for a black flame. That would be kind of amusing. But at the same time, I don't really want them to be able to play anything. Although it looks like there's one spot open, so they could. Uh, this would summon something. It wouldn't summon anything that can particularly help us. because We just need one more skill on the stack. Because we're at we're at eight. And we need one more. And we don't have anything to summon a unit at burst speed. So yeah, they're gonna be able to drop drop something, which is a little frustrating. I think this could be fun. Huh? They didn't attack or do anything. Interesting. All right, so they're killing one unit, but it'll get revived immediately, so that shouldn't be that big of a deal. All right, so we can have a full board attacking. Hmm. So they were only able to get one ice shard out. So apparently this last one didn't count for the attacking uh, threaded volley. But still, that's GG. Alright, GG. Nice. Vengeance spawn on an arrow. Easy first try, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, that was that was fun. You can feeling helped a lot, yeah. I'm looking on Twitter, not seeing anything uh, new. Yep, sadly not. All right, that was really fun with Talia. I think this six star is solid and it synergizes quite well with Talia, as you would hope. I don't think it's as strong as something like Kaisa's. And I don't think it's quite as versatile. You're still pretty much playing Talia the exact same way. Yes, you have a little bit more synergy in how you're building her because now going for effects that increase your skills is actually going to matter. So it does give you that little bit of um, an element. But as far as how you're actually playing Talia, it's not really changing too much, and you're still a very unit-focused champion. And so, like, in that first match, if your units kind of get shut down, you're still going to have a rough time. But it is a lot of fun, and it is very strong. <laughs> we got revealed Evelyn, but that's about it. Yeah, that it's sad. I thought they would show more. Do you have the champ in Monument Relic? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. That is one that also works out pretty well for uh, Talia. We we're kind of doing that build just to sort of simulate having her full five or full six stars. 
Because we have her 6th star, but we don't have the 5th star. So we don't have the extra mana. But yeah, going for... Uh, the Storm Carp Spire, Frozen Tomb. This can be nice, because Talia can copy this, but then also you just have another landmark that's helping you get more damage. Riot kind of killing the hype. I thought that they would post stuff over the weekend. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't. And then if they don't post anything else today, I do kind of feel like that might be a mistake. Yeah, we could, if we wanted, also go for like big guns so that we have three extra damage on our, our skills, regardless of our Kalia. Ludin's last item because of three Talias. Uh, if we're wanting to focus on our units, big guns is better. If we're wanting to focus on counting down Talia with the frozen tomb, then yeah, Ludin's could be could be better. Also, yeah, add drops. We'll just pause in the waiting for for a moment. Isn't it usually three days of posting before patch day? Constellation 1, 2, and then patch notes. Yeah, normally on Monday we get the first champ revealed, or like their constellation and that, and then the second day we get the second champ, and we get the patch notes on the second day both, and then the third day we have the patch. And so... I mean, maybe they're going to do it later today. I do feel like, yeah, they need to post more today. It's yeah, kind of weird we're not getting anything. So hopefully, hopefully they do something. Wait, wasn't Evelyn spotted in Demacia? I mean, Evelyn, I think, is all over the place. Yeah, I thought with them starting the reveal like a week early, I thought they were going to do that, post on the weekend, and then... Yeah, be showing more today. We'll have to have to see. It's a little. It's definitely strange if we only get like the Evelyn reveal, but we don't get the star powers or anything like that. So focusing on your Talia, if you actually have her at the full six stars and you have that extra mana. Ludens is definitely going to be better here. With Talia without the extra mana, it can sometimes be hard to get her on the board in order to copy the Frozen Tomb. You really want to get some extra amount of uh, cost reductions for her. Nocturne and Fiddle were both last seen in Demacia. I mean, yeah, a lot of people are in Demacia right now. All the demons going around. Can we get a pre-update Evelyn gameplay? Uh, maybe. Let's go and look at her for a moment. Yeah, some things they really need to change for her. I know we talked about this earlier, but probably most of you weren't here. One, they need to do something to change her second star power. Because right now, this is making a serious anti-synergy in your kit. Because this is revolving around killing followers, including your own followers. But with Evelyn, you don't want to do that because your own units dying is the limit on how much you can level up and down. So that's a major anti synergy right there. And then in your starting deck, there's some cards like Warden's Prey is a last breath unit. So it's incentivizing you having this unit die. Not really great. Uh, Viper Worm, to play this, you have to strike an ally or deal damage to your Nexus. Also really not bad because that's also kind of pushing you towards killing your own units. So that's not great. Uh, Phantom Fr Prankster is kind of like borderline. Your husks are dying. And so this can still get some work done. 
but it's also still pushing you towards just having your units die in general. Evelyn will be pretty good, though. Right now, Starforged is so good on her just because you really like the extra mana because it lets you get her on the board one round earlier. So either keeping this build and then you can let her play her round one or just the fact that you can open up your build more to not have to worry about Starforge can be pretty nice. Uh, level up champs is the best legendary power for her. Not anymore. It used to, yeah, trigger so that it immediately granted you your whole board or like all of your units everywhere, like 10-10. Pretty sure they nerfed that months ago, though. So <laughs> I don't think that's the case anymore. Evelyn six star. When you kill an ally husk, grant it twice the stats to your allies everywhere. Can we look at her level two and assume what the constellation shape would be? So probably a constellation that's coming out and around. I do wonder, so they either can change the second star or they can make it so you no longer have a limit on how many units you can kill and you can just keep leveling up and down. Does it work with Oath, though? I don't think so. I think anything has to... You have to level it yourself. So having something that's already leveled doesn't trigger your star powers. Would Evelyn be good in the Evolve Spirit of the Buru build? Evelyn has kind of a pretty... Evelyn is a pretty big issue where her best builds for her are so much better than her other builds that it's really hard to justify playing some of the other ones. So yeah, there are some effects that can be really good, like Spirit of the Buru making it so essentially all your husks get all these keywords... I think I scrolled over it. There, yes, we're the burial. So your husks get all of these keywords, essentially. And so any unit that consumes a husk also gets these, which is very solid. But normally just going for the level up builds is stronger and a lot stronger than anything else. And like this build right here, she's one of the champions that you can actually clear the five star adventures with or even some of the weekly nightmares. Without this build, it's much less consistent. I really hope her six star is one that can completely change her playstyle and open up more builds. Yes, it would be nice if she did focus more on her husks and that whole mechanic, because right now her whole mechanic is just leveling up your champions as many times as possible in order to build up all your units. And so your husks, while they're nice, while they do contribute to your scaling, they're kind of more of an afterthought. So making your husks a little bit more important would be would be fun. I mean, they don't have to do a massive rework to her, but tweaking a couple things would be would be really good. I like free champ spell for level up on her, but stun is close to my preference too. I also like the Deceiver's Crest to give her that free uh, spell. The stun just feels so good, and in harder content, it's a lifesaver. Also... Wish they removed Immobile, it'd be such a good concept. I mean, then you'd just be pretty much the same thing as almost like Nora, constantly just summoning units. Hope she gets the Pike or Vi treatment. Same idea, better execution. Definitely. Because she really is one of those champions that, while she is super strong, her kit does fight itself. So being able to have that work a little bit better would be would be good. I still have Starforge in my shop. Should I get it or are there better relics? Uh, Starforge is really nice to have. It's really good on a lot of champions. 
Uh, I think we can we can grab Evelyn. And let's go do a match with her. Probably maybe something simple. But yeah, let's grab her here, and we don't want to do any of the weekly content. I think we might just do a good old Aurelian Soul match. Yeah, I don't feel like Swain or Lissandra. And yeah, we want to save these for later. So I think we'll just jump into uh, an ASOL while we see if they drop anything. In my opinion, out of the pay to win relics, the best ones are Swain and Starforge. Both those are very good and very versatile. Uh, when an ally dies, Treacherous Strain, draw two. We'll go for the draw two because we want to draw our Evelyn. Let's go for Gangplank. I accept your terms. What if they're waiting for the world matches to end to upload any news? I kind of doubt it. All right, well, we know we're drawing our Evelyn regardless, so yeah, it's not that big of a deal. This is fine. You're going to do the 5.5 and 6.5 now? Hmm. Yeah, I'm personally going to wait. Hopefully they don't kill our husk here. Okay, we got, got lucky. All right, let's drop our Evelyn. Yeah, being able to play Evelyn turn two is very nice. Mind if I slip into something a little more painful? Just been lurking, jump. Six star, now you have giga husks and double stats and double keywords. Alright, little unfortunate, but let's just go and do some damage. I'm also going to be disappointed if they don't reveal Evelyn's Star Powers Day. Really bad decision for hype. Yeah, if they don't do that today in like going. 20 minutes. Yeah, it's going to be bad. New post. All right, checking. Okay, they dropped the stuff for Evelyn. Uh, let's drop this here. We'll quickly finish up this match and then go and look at it. Let's quickly drop this, level up again, stun everyone, attack, and end the game. Oh no, I'm disappointed. Uh-oh. I mean, bear in mind that we're not seeing what her bonus stars are. We don't know the bonus stars. So that could change a lot. All right, let's go and look at it. Do this again sometime. Uh, do, do, do. All right. So we have Evelyn. So let's see. When you level up an ally champion, grant allies everywhere one one. So that's the same. Level up an ally champion, grant everywhere two two. That's the same. Lost one starting man. The first time you kill an allied follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. So they're changing this to allied follower, not enemy follower. They're not actually changing the core issue with it. When an allied husk grants stats to an ally, it grants double the amount. All right, so it's giving you a lot more stats or stacks for your husks. Okay. Looking... All right, so they're keeping Warden's Prey. They're doing Ceaseless Sentry, though. This is also Last Breath, draw one, I think. And then they're putting in Siren Song. So they are slightly changing the uh, some of the cards we're getting. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and look at that here in a moment. So they didn't fix her star power issue. That is correct. So they're not showing us what the five star is. I'm guessing that it's just because it's just mana flow. And yeah, the big issue with the current two star is that it's still incentivizing you to kill your own units. Because so the problem is when you kill an allied follower, so when you kill a husk, Yes, you get another husk in hand, but that's also giving you essentially another death. So it's reducing the amount of times Evelyn can level up. The six star is doubling the amount of stats you get from a husk. Which is nice. But it's still keeping that core anti synergy with Evelyn that. You're struggling to kill your own units, but the more you kill, the less you can level. And yeah, we don't we don't see the four star either. So I don't know why we don't see the fourth and five star. Sad. It is nice, though, that they are improving her starting deck. So some of the things we're getting out well, the two cards we pointed out, they got rid of. So. That's not terrible. All right, let's look at the different cards that they're adding. All right, so last breath, draw one. So it's another last breath effect. That's annoying. But this is still better than the other unit. Uh, Evelyn, getting some more draw isn't bad. Technically, you could use this with your second star power to have this die and then be able to play it again. So it's better than the Viper Worm. It's still a last breath effect, which fights Evelyn's level up. So that's kind of frustrating, but still it's it's better. And then they added the Sirens uh, song. I spelled that with an M. So six cost, summon a random husk, grant one cost allies everywhere, one one. So they're probably going to put some cost reduction on this and you get random husk. All of your one cost units, so all of your other husks get an additional 1-1. One, one. So further doubling down on how your husks are scaling. So really, this isn't making Evelyn worse. This is making Evelyn better, because especially with the Love Eternal, you often were wanting to use this on your own units. Normally, if Evelyn is already leveled as many times as she can, then starting to replay some of your husks or your followers can be nice. And then Knight's Kiss is doubling the amount of stats you're getting from a husk. Going to give you some really good scaling because this can be effective throughout the entire game. And then they got rid of two of your worst cards in the starting deck. So this isn't making Evelyn worse. And we don't know what the four and five star is. Maybe they're going to give her a special five star. Maybe. Maybe they're going to say with your five star, uh, your allied follower deaths don't contribute to Evelyn's level up condition. Maybe. Also, we don't know what the four star is either. So it's not like they're killing Evelyn. She's still going to be better than she is now. It's just kind of the core issue she has isn't being currently addressed. That being said, we don't know what her constellation is. We don't know what the bonus nodes are. That can really change things. So while it might be a little disappointing, it's not necessarily terrible. Let's pray her bonus nodes give her infinite level ups. Yeah. Sentry will get... Uh, Shadow Totem, Siren will have double time watch. Yeah, probably. The six star isn't bad, just nowhere near what one would expect. Yes. It's okay, guys. They'll probably fix all of her issues with pay to win relic. <laughs> Maybe. Could you like Kaisa Love Eternal 2? Potentially, yeah. They still could like 
they're not showing us the four and five star, which is a interesting choice. I'm not really sure why. Like, honestly, they could have just gotten rid of the one star and just had the three star and the four star. Like, I, yeah, that's weird that they're not showing us that. She seems like Daily Darius, Caitlyn, Tears of Power and Worth. I mean, Evelyn is already really good, though. Like, with nothing else, just the fact that she gets one more starting mana is massive on its own. So, Evelyn is already a very strong champion, and the upgrades we're seeing here, it is improving her. She's not getting any worse, and she's already strong. But no, they're not fixing the core issue with Evelyn. I think she needs a unique node where Evelyn gets Farsight. I mean, that could be nice, yeah. If they give her the four stars of Summon Two Husks, it's so over for Eve Enjoyers. If they do that and they don't do anything else for Evelyn, that is very, very bad. Because, yeah, it's like, okay, you're Evelyn now. The amount she can level up is immediately reduced by two. Like, if they do that, it's gonna, like, the best thing for Evelyn is not to get your fourth star. Like, I would have, I would hope that the developers aren't gonna do that. Siren Song going burst? I mean, it's possible, actually. If her relic is, I can level up infinite times, that is gonna be. Pretty rough. Hopefully her song doesn't, or her uh, relic doesn't do that, because that would be bad. In my brain, what they want is you to buff your husks a little bit, and then boom, you finish with a strong attack. Yeah, anyone that says Evelyn is trash, I would hard disagree with. She's not trash now, and she's not going to be trash after this. I mean, if they give her the four star, that's going to really hurt Evelyn. <laughs> the four star of you summon two husks if they give her that without changing anything else then that could be an issue that being said she'd maybe just turn from this like scaling champ into a serious aggro champ where you can only level her once or twice but all of your units are so massive it doesn't even matter so there is that potential She's already stronger than 6-star Nora. Yeah, kind of. Imagine her 5-star, she makes everyone level down. That'd be interesting. Could her 4-star be start with 2 husks? I hope not. If I hope not. Unless they change something else, that would be bad. Evelyn 5-star, plus 1 starting mana when enemy dies. Grant a fleeting copy of it in hand, set its cost to 0. It's so weird they didn't do the 4 and 5-stars like they always do. Yeah, I don't, I don't get why, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do that. That seems weird. Imagine it blocks the path to other ones like Heimer. Yeah, Evelyn's four star is the two husks, and that's blocking off the rest of the constellation. That could be a little annoying. At least I can focus on Aatrox with a light heart. I think she'll be getting Yip's Genius. That wouldn't be bad, to be honest. Yip's Genius would actually be very, very good. Because since you're getting twice the amount of stats with your 6-star, then you'd just be getting, like, 4-4 four, four from every single husks, husk on top of the other stats. Tomorrow we get the big info dump, so we have to hold out hope until then. Yeah. 6-star isn't crazy, but she doesn't really need that much scaling to begin with, so I think it's going to be fine. All we need is a decent 4-star. Yeah, they haven't they haven't killed the champion. The fact that they changed her starting deck is nice. So that's good. Yeah, it's we're really going to have to see what her 4 and 5 star is and what her bonus nodes are. She's still going to be better than she is right now. But they might not fix her main issues. Her Star of Bounty might be busted. Yeah, I mean, there's so many champions that they just have, like, one Star of Bounty that completely changes how the champion is. So that could be the case here. 
I hope her four star is an additional random item to husks. If Evelyn gets like 40 regen and bonus nodes, I would declare Evelyn the best constellation. It's so sad when I see a six star that only does stats. A bit, yeah. It might be new powers. As far as the four star, yeah, they could be not showing the four star because it's something unique that's not in the game yet. Although, even if that's the case, like, I think they still revealed, like, Heimerdinger's, and they've done this before with another champion that had a unique one, like Talia, I think. Well, maybe not with Talia, because she was part of the whole Constellation update, but especially for Heimer, they showed us early. So it still seems weird that... Like, unless it's something that's spoilers for tomorrow, like, if it somehow has some synergy with, like, Fiddlesticks or something like that, I don't know why they're not showing it. If a husk gets spirit, what happens? Uh, then they get the extra stats, your unit gets the extra stats, and then they get spirit to get even more stats. Uh, or evolve poggers. Yeah, if Evelyn also got evolve, so all your units get 1-1 one, one for every keyword, I feel like that's too busted to give a champion. Because that would just be insane. Like, suddenly, immediately going for spirit of the buru, so your husks get, like, three keywords would be the best thing ever. Hope and Copium? Yeah. Hopium for Yip's Genius. Items on Husks. Four Star could be Welcome Gifts. Interesting. I hope Fiddlesticks is going to get some proper art on, like, the Caitlyn Six Star tomorrow. Her Relic should be, like, Power, Round Start, Summon a Husk. <laughs> One Star Aesol is better than Evelyn Three Star. They'll kill a champion if they give the husk power without fixing the level up situation at four star. I mean, yes, if they do that, I don't think the developers are that dumb or stubborn. I don't think that they would do that without changing other elements. Unless for some reason the developers seriously have a vendetta against Evelyn's current playstyle. Unless they don't like the fact that she can abuse the level up relics the way she can. I don't know. Why they would do them, just yeah, not sure. I just hope the four star is either Yips Genius or the Big Old Dust Stash. I mean, Yips is possible, they gave Yips to other people, so possible. I got a Bilgewater Nova Crystal from Monthlies. Is Misfortune worth six star? If I don't have her Shock and Awe Relic, I would say yes, it's still worth doing, but. The Shock and Awe Relic is very nice to have. If you don't have the Shock and Awe Relic, going for Echoing Spirit, so you're playing her Champion Spell a bunch, is still... is still very, very good. Is Misfortune without her Relic better than Pike? Um... Without her Relic, she becomes much less consistent. So it's going to be closer. They literally wasted one and three star on the condition of leveling up. So it doesn't make sense for them to do that. And then not make leveling up her main build. Yeah. Because yeah, they. This is the exact same as what we have now, right? I'm going to go re read through her star powers again and just make sure. So yeah, star powers. When you level up a ally champion, grant allies everywhere 2-2. Two, two. And then, yeah, for the constellation, when you level up an ally champion, grant allies everywhere 2-2. Two, two. So it's, it's the exact same effect for the two-star... The first time you kill a follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. And then the first time you kill an allied follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. So yeah, they're literally only for her base star powers. They're just changing the fact that this is only affecting your units. So you're pretty much going to be using this on your husks or your one and two drops. Let's hope bonus stars fix the situation. Yeah. 
Is there a chance they'll change base Evelyn card for balance reason? It's possible. They've said before that they could do something like that. Like I asked about Fiora, if they'd ever add Fiora, and they said maybe, but they'd probably change her card for Path of Champions so that it was more of like when you level up, you deal damage to the enemy Nexus instead of flat out killing it. I'm going to go do some snooping and see if uh, Paolo has said anything. Uh, doesn't look like it at the moment. All right, it's uh, possible that they'll reveal more potentially later today. But this also might be it. If they give her some manifest uh, station stuff, she could run Starforge and rely on generating more champions to level. Uh, Starforge gives you level two champions, doesn't it? Yeah, you find level two champions with Starforge, so they're already leveled, so that wouldn't really work. If you're going to rank champions a six star, which tier does Ash belong? Uh, probably an A tier. Maybe S, but probably A. I hope they make her so she always reverts to level one. They could do that. Steal your heart for the worst. Oh, I mean, the devs have been doing a good job recently, so I, I have faith in them. Maybe she straight up doesn't have a four star power. Uh, the level up power used to work with Evelyn, just not anymore. Timer was a ton of fun, even though I judged him too quickly. Yeah. All right, so yeah, try to bear in mind that for a lot of the recent champions, they looked pretty rough when we only saw this. So, like, for Heimer, he didn't look... The best i think the same could be said about jace he also looked pretty rough when we saw just this part of him and well pretty much most champions they can look a little iffy when you're only seeing part of the constellation of the update so while i will agree some of this has the potential to be bad i am not going to judge and be like this is terrible because honestly what we've seen like, this going just to your allied followers can be better. The 6-star, while it is a little bit boring, is going to give you a good amount of power. And then the fact that they actually changed the starting deck and they changed two cards is solid. It does make her starting deck much better. So, so far, we have actually seen some good things. Now, yes, the most... The biggest problem with Evelyn still exists, as far as we know. But they could have switched her card for a path of champions only one so that like at the end of every round she levels down so they could have changed that we just don't know yet so i'm not going to judge to conclusions and say that she's bad the devs have been killing it so far they've been doing a very good job so i'm holding out and until i've seen the whole constellation and if i see the whole constellation and it still looks terrible then i'm going to wait until i actually play her and then if i play her then and I hate it, then I'll be like, okay, then yeah, it's bad. I think her four star is adding fiddlesticks to the deck. Compared to other Shadow Isles champions, she's a bit low. Isn't Evelyn's not Shadow Isles? Evelyn is Runeterra. Unless you were talking about someone else. But she's Runeterra. Get her to six star for the science. <laughs> <laughs> 
Probably. Now, I don't know if you're talking about a different champion, but if you're talking about Evelyn, yeah, she's not Shadow Isles. Just like Misfortune, her four star could be Evolution. Yeah, like let's actually look at some of the other champions and what they have and what maybe she could get. <sighs> Goodness. So a big one for like Misfortune is Yips is pretty crazy to give a champion, like giving them an epic power. This is something that they could give Evelyn. Suddenly all of your husks are now giving you 2-2, two, two, and then if you get the 6-star, they're essentially giving you 4-4s four, par as far as extra stats. Uh, what do we actually think their support champion is going to get? Because every champion has something that's buffing up their support champion. So what do we think Evelyn's support champion would get that would fit for her build? Is 6-star Heimer good? I don't have it, but I've heard it's, I've heard it's decent. Stalker's Blade, I guess. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any, especially like relics, like double attack or scout would be fine, but doesn't really have any major synergies. Support champs have spread keywords like Yumi, possibly Succubus Brand is, that could be a funny one, yeah. If Stalker's Blade procs after consuming the Husk stat, then that probably... Tempest Blade or Crown Guard? That actually... That would be pretty funny if they gave the support champion one of the level up relics. That would be interesting. I kind of doubt it, but that's a good call, Heroic. That, that could be funny if they did that. So, the four star we don't know. Hopefully it's Yips. Yips could be massive. As far as... Uh, your support champion one. A level up relic could be pretty funny, but Succubus Brand could also be decent. Late here, what are the Evelyn changes? Uh, they changed her two star so that it now only targets your own units. It's now when you it's only when you kill an allied follower, not an enemy follower. Uh, your six star is doubling the stats you gain from husks. And then they changed her starting deck to get rid of the Viper Worm to give a Ceaseless Sentry. And they got rid of the Phantom Prankster to give a Siren Song. So that, at the moment, is the big changes that we know of uh, for right now. Alright, so something for followers. Followers you acquire in adventures. What is Evelyn going to have that targets your followers? Let's actually look at some of the upgrades she already has on her deck. dragon was so bad in her deck thank god it's gone yeah so studded leather wait do they actually still have hate spike did they get rid of hate spike no hate spike's still there never mind also uh so the crawling viper worm is one that has two items on it and this is the one that's getting replaced by the ceaseless sentry so it's probably going to get two items or, like, these same two ones. And then the Phantom Prankster just as the pickaxe, but this means that uh, the other Relic should at least, or the other card, the Siren Song, should get something as well. Probably Double Time Watch, maybe just flat cost reduction. Followers you acquire have Summon a Husk. I mean, honestly, they might just go for stats as well I don't think they don't think they what 
Uh, acquired followers get the common item that gives them a keyword, maybe. Maybe. What if they made new husk items? I mean, it's possible. With the expansion to level 50, will it be more items? It doesn't seem like it. So that's one thing I asked in the interview. And it seems like more of the upgrades we'll get from leveling up our champions is going to be things like increased chance to find epic or legendary powers or increased nexus health or some more like passive buffs like that. Not really anything that's fundamentally changing your core kit. At least that's what they made it seem from the interview. Siren Song should have Chalice of Harmony. And Chalice of Harmony like World Ender? Maybe. What if Evelyn gets the round start summon a 010 prankster? That would be interesting. So yeah, they're going to have something for support champs. Some of your spells will probably, or some of your effects will probably get specific items on them. So for Evelyn, I could see if they, one, if they did make Siren Song burst speed, they have been making a lot of slow spells burst, and burst speed Siren Song could be, uh, it'd be okay. It's not like it actually gives you a blocker, but probably going to give some cost reduction, so this is at most a four cost. They could do something, though, so that, yeah, like, all of your husks get a random item. Because for some of the champions, like, for Talia as well as Ash, they have something in their constellation. So, like, for Talia, your Grumpy Rock Bear gets Phage. So this isn't a card you have, this is a card you generate. And it's the same thing for Ash with the Yeti that you can generate from some of your spells. It gets items. So maybe they'd have it, so just, like, husks you generate either get an extra 1-1 one, one as far as stats, or they get just, a, like, a random item. Maybe they'd do something like that and just further double down on any husks you get. Possibly. They're edging us like Evelyn. Uh, Penelope tweeted, to the LOR community, the best is yet to come. Yeah, I'm, I'm having faith in the devs. There hasn't been a single champion they've come out with since the Constellation update that I've been disappointed in. Every single champion, and there's been several times where we've just seen this part of them and really been worried. Like, especially Heimerdinger and Jace, it was looking a little rough. But they potentially, like, the devs play this game. They know the issues that these champions have. They're already fixing some of the issues with her her deck. Yeah, I'm I'm choosing to have faith in them so far. Grow all husks to eight eight. Uh, yeah, all all husks get Titanify. Kate is the closest, but she's fun to play. Yeah, exactly. Like, Caitlyn is one that has a lot of crazy upgrades. We thought she was going to be, or at least I thought she was going to be a lot better, but she's still tons of fun. I still like playing Caitlyn, even though she's definitely on the weaker side. All of the ones released after the initial launch were great. Only one that I can think is a complete dud was Nora, but Nora is still a fun champion. And yeah, it's... Some of the initial constellations that they put out have had issues of the, the first batch when they updated everyone. Every single champion they've put out since then, though, has been excellent. Like, uh, we have Swain and Viego, both of them absolutely fantastic. Uh, we had 
Yasuo, which is pretty similar, but still really, really good. Caitlyn was a lot of fun. Uh, Heimerdinger is fun as well. I think Heimerdinger actually is very surprising. Very solid champion. Uh, Jace was really good. Ari was also great. We said we needed Ari for a while. One of the champions that has like ally recall synergy, so she was really good. They upgraded Vi, and she's much better than she used to be. And they were able to ke keep the core of how she played and then just made her better. See, I don't think there's any champions that have come out since they updated the constellations. All the champions that they've updated or launched have been good. Four star Yasuo is not great, but the rest of it was good. I mean, but the four star Yasuo, it's not bad. Like, no, it's not great, but it's not bad. First batch was 50 50 for sure. Half work, the other half is meh. A bit, but also they're releasing so many champions all at once. But yeah, some of them were a little bit buggy and things like that. Vi's rework was so good. Yeah, she's now... She went from one of, like, the weakest champions to... I mean, obviously she has a whole constellation, but one of the best. At least much better than she used to be. I like the four star on Yas. Yeah, it's... Like, it's not anything crazy, but... If you're playing Yasuo, you're normally trying to just focus on Yasuo. And so Fury, if you focus on Yasuo, is great. So yes. I am not losing faith in the devs at the moment. I'm still going to wait and hold off Judgment until we see more of her kit. Yes, some things are a little worrying. And honestly, I think that her four star might actually be the double husks but i think that they might do that but then they might add a different version of her champion spell like they might fix the problem but you're not going to see the ch you're not going to see the fix with just showing the four stars so maybe they knew that it is going to be the husks and people will hate that because they know it's a going to be an issue but they are going to fix the problem. We just don't see the fix yet. Hopefully, hopefully they're not adding an epic relic that fixes the issue. Because <laughs> that's borderline what they did with Caitlyn. And that wasn't great. I still stand behind the, the fact that that relic isn't mandatory. But the fact that it's like, it feels more mandatory than most other relics for a champion. And it's not, it's not good. Yips Genius 4-star, please. It'd be so good with the 6-star. What's the issue with Evelyn? Uh, so the issue with Evelyn is that she wants to be able to level up and down as many times as possible so she can keep triggering this power right here when you level an ally champion. Grant allies everywhere 2-2. Two, two. For her, the limiting factor on being able to level up and down is your own units dying. Once you have 6 or more units on your side die, Evelyn can't level down anymore, so she can't keep triggering this effect so the main problem with evelyn is that they're pushing you towards killing your own units with effects like her two star and so it's a bit of anti-synergy of part of your kit is benefiting from you killing your own units but the other part doesn't want you to kill your own units because that shuts down your scaling Uh, don't need to be yip can be the created one uh look if we like if we look at all of this while thinking her level up has no limit it actually looks nuts yes if they have fixed the issue with evelyn that she can level up as many times as she wants then there's no issues here then everything is positive sure some people might not like that the six star is just stats I mean, Evelyn is fundamentally a scaling champion, so it, it fits. It's not really changing how you're playing, but it does give you a lot more scaling. But if they have fixed that problem where she can only level up 
a limited amount of times, then everything is great. We just, we don't know yet. So yeah, kind of holding off. I've never needed to level her more than twice. You do at harder difficulties. Like when you're trying to take her into five or six star content, you have to try to level her up as many times as possible and you, you will hit that limit. They're going to fake us out. It's sharing is caring. <laughs> Makes sense why I have not really played her. When she's leveled, the game plan changes. I build relics about her level ups. Yeah. The change to killing allied units is clearly there to get more husks. Yes, definitely. And that's not that's not bad. It does kind of limit it. But using this to get more husks, especially since you're going to get twice the amount of stats with your husks, theoretically, if you have the six star, this could be good because then, yeah, you play a husk, then you can immediately drop another husk and just gives you a lot more husk generation, which can be good if they fix her level up issue. Yeah, Yips is nice, but with the 6-star, Yips Genius would be a little crazy. Since then, you're making your units get, like, 4-4 four, four extra stats from every single husk. Which can just get even crazier. So yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I'm having faith in the devs. Uh, for now, every single champion that's released since the Constellation has been good even though some of them were a little worrying. Also, it's... I'm going to check since it's just turned over to a new hour, seeing if there is anything crazy. Yeah, I feel like they... They know the issues with Evelyn. All right, I'm not seeing anything anything different, sadly. Would be a little crazy, isn't that the point of a six star? I mean, yeah. How many times does Eve level in a run? Normally, on average, it's like three to four is generally what you do with Evelyn. As far as how many times you're leveling. Three to four, I would say, is the is the average. If you're going into really easy content, then you can often just have it be once or twice. But if you're going into very difficult content, then you're trying to push for that five to six amount. So yeah, averaging it out, it'd be like six, six, which then with the... Uh, six star would be another like 12 12 as far as stats for for some of those units although no, it's 12 12 on the units from getting the husks but that unit also will have also had six six themselves so yeah evelyn already had crazy scaling but the increased stats in your husks will <laughs> will be pretty nutty because also one thing for your uh, husks, especially with the Love Eternal, when you kill an allied follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. So you could kill a husk and then play another husk. So that husk is getting twice the amount of stats from the first husk. So that husk is now massive. And then when you play a different unit, they're now getting double the amount of stats from that new husk that already got double the amount of stats from the initial husk. So this could actually kind of scale out of control and getting extra husk generation from your two star and then also from your siren song. The scaling you could get on Evelyn could be crazy. Honestly, for the four star, they really could just do like overwhelm potentially if they wanted. The six star is pretty nuts taking the three star into account. Yeah, because your husks can scale off of other husks. 
so you can kind of compound the doubling effect of the stats. So the this could be actually pretty crazy, and you might actually want to go and for once use Succubus Brand on Evelyn. I don't think I've ever used it on Evelyn because the level up relics are always better, and honestly, that's probably still going to stay the same. But 1-1, one, one, when I kill a unit, summon a random husk. This, if you're really focusing on your husks being, giving you a lot of scaling, this could be crazy. Also, does anyone know, with Succubus Brand equipped, when Evelyn consumes a husk, does that count as killing them? Like, does she generate another husk from consuming a husk? I honestly don't know. Yes? Okay. Thank you, Hayers. So then, while it's still going to be difficult to overcome the level up builds, just because they're so good, Succubus Brand could actually start having much more of a reason to be picked, since your husk is giving you twice the amount of stats, so generating even more of them could really be good for you. Is this build better than the Rally Relic? Uh, yes. So the problem with the Rally Relic is quite often you can burn the attack token, and you just can't use it. And especially in very difficult challenges, sometimes the enemy has units that are just too big for you to really deal with. And so just focusing on control, keeping them from attacking, and just scaling up your units is very good. If you're taking Evelyn into very high-end contents, like five star and above, this is the recommended build I would go with. Brand is bad because it uh, turbo fills the six dead bidding requirement. Right, which is why I've never taken it with Evelyn. But if they are getting rid of that requirement, then this could actually be good. But at the moment, yeah, at the moment it's not good because you actually don't want to kill too many husks with Evelyn, which is also why your two star is kind of garbage. Now that you mention this and with the six star, it sounds like uh, they may want to make her main playstyle rather make that her main playstyle rather than leveling Evelyn. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. If the four stars yips, Husk would get between 8-8 eight, eight and 10-10. Ten, ten. The leveling is just to scale up Husks a bit and accelerate the exponential doubling. Possibly. <coughs> Have you tried Strength of Stone with Evelyn? Maybe? That sounds familiar, but honestly, I can't remember if I've tried that or not. Knowing Dev's position of not letting players have too much fun in Path of Champions, they'd likely change her level down to condition to I've seen 8 to 10 allies die. I don't transform down. I mean, if they do that, it's still a win. But I don't necessarily agree with the devs not wanting players to have fun. But if they change Evelyn's condition at all, to increase it, like, hopefully there's just no limit. Hopefully they put no limit, it's just round end, summon a random husk, and transforming back into Evelyn. Hopefully they just get rid of this whole requirement in the middle of if fewer than six hours have died. Hopefully they just change that, she doesn't have a limit. Doing that one change would be absolutely massive for Evelyn. But if they also increase this amount, like, any amount is a win. Obviously we don't want there to be a limit, but... If it goes to 8 to 10, it's still not terrible. I think putting Scene on Evelyn would help a lot. Yeah, if they also did that... I mean, again, why not just re remove it entirely? But also, having her Scene allies die this game would also help. Uh, I'll look at Twitter. Uh, no new information at the moment, Carthians. Did we ever get a star that affects directly the champion? Um, No. 
Oh yeah, Thresh. Good call, Jay. Thresh's two star directly affects his champion. Really wish the two star only applied to husks. Well, one thing for that Jay, um, it not just being affected to husks can be decent because of her new deck. So you have Ceaseless Sentry. So Ceaseless Sentry being able to be killed again and resummoned is one reason why it's good that the, the two star isn't affecting just husks. Now, again, you normally don't want to kill your own units, but if they change her level of condition, that is why that can be pretty good. It's giving you some extra draw every time you kill it, so it could be a good draw engine. So it not being so constrained is kind of nice. Yeah, Thresh is the, I think, as far as I know, the only uh, champion that, yeah, they have one of their star powers that's directly just affecting them. Which is pretty good. Oh, I see a notification. One moment. Anything new? Also looks like ad dropped. Oh, yeah, nothing. Uh, nothing new at the moment. Although I kind of doubt we're going to get necessarily anything too new. I guess we'll go check uh, Paolo again. Oh yeah, not seeing not seeing anything new at the moment, sadly. We should get a lot of news tomorrow though. Oh, they said on Discord that uh PVDDR was on vacation. Okay. Good to know, because, yeah, he is normally the person that reveals a lot more about the, the champions. Although, who even knows if he was the one that uh, did the Evelyn rework? I know he's been working on a lot of the champions, but might not actually been uh, Apollo. Yeah, Evelyn, I think she can't be she can't be decent. We still have a lot of information yet to find out about her. But... I'm actually looking looking forward to it. Having a way to directly get stars, shards for champion would be nice. Randomness is getting annoying. Yes, and that is something they've talked about adding and that is supposed to be worked on. They've said that they have some direct farming method that they're going to be adding into the game, and I believe that's happening before the end of the year. I'm pretty sure like months ago. They said that, that that was going to be coming before the end of the year. Maybe in the like dev update before the last one. Because, yeah, having some method of target farming to directly get champion stars, shards, uh, champion relics that are currently only um, available through coins. Yeah, they do need to add that and they should be working on that soon or next couple months. It should be coming into the game. Yeah, it's, it is pretty awesome, the fact that they are actually changing her starting deck. Because two of the cards we highlighted that were bad, that they're actually changing. Also, Siren's Song can be a little crazy because it's giving all of your husks an additional 1-1. One, one. But with that, that's actually going to work again with your 6-star of any buff to your husks is 
doubled, so it's going to be even better. Maybe we're getting more campaigns for the champion expedition epic relics. That would be nice if that's what they decide to do. Everything aside, just not having the dragon card in the deck is so massive. Yes, that the crawling viper worm was pretty terrible and the phantom prankster was not great. So those two cards not being in the deck, that alone is good. Love Eternal focusing to your own followers is decent. Again, though, really interesting that they decided to not give us the four and five star. Since they haven't done that, maybe she's going to be one that we're getting something new. Yes, this is new uh, Ventress. They revealed Evelyn. She is going to be the champion that's getting updated this next patch. And... They're kind of tweaking some of her star powers. And then they also updated the starting deck to get rid of two of the worst cards. Sounds promising. The only animation speed and some new adventures for low levels. I'm still... Didn't open Lissandra is all I need. Well, the animation speed is coming this patch. A new adventure is coming this patch as well for both high and low adventures. Siren Song. Yeah. Just getting rid of duplicates in vaults would be a good thing. Because the only valuable purchase in the Emporium is the Golden Reliquary. And it's one per month, so you just stockpile a bunch of Stardust. There's literally no point having duplicates in bronze vaults, considering the growing amount of champs getting constellations. Please give Siren Song an update, upgrade cost, OG, or something like that. That is, I think, highly, highly likely that Siren Song gets some amount of cost reduction. Either this gets flat cost reduction, so it goes down to like a four cost, or this gets like the the watch on it, so every round it t counts down. Pretty much anything that costs, especially any spell that costs six mana, they end up reducing down. There's very rarely do they not do that. Imagine if Siren Song gets double me with the same targets. I mean, it's possible. I could see in your level ups for your champion that Siren Song gets cost reduction, and then in your constellation, it gets an item like the Elixir of Sorcery to double it. So that is, yeah, very, very possible. Have they explained why you only get one relic, epic relic per month? The main reason behind that, at least in my opinion, is that they want you to always have something in the Golden Reliquary for you to be able to get. They don't want people to get them too fast and then not have anything in the Golden Reliquaries to achieve. And so by it being once a month, that gives them time to develop more epic relics. So by the time you finish your collection, then there should be more epic relics getting added in so that there's always something to be able to uh, work towards and achieve. Her four to five star may depend on the new gameplay. That is possibly a good point, um, Amilovich. So... That's actually, yeah, I did say something to have to do with fiddlesticks, but that's refining it down. So the new champion is very, very likely to be fiddlesticks. Fiddlesticks is probably a champion that they are working on before they switch to Path of Champions, meaning he's probably someone that has his own support package and probably his own keywords and play style, which could be like anything new. Possibly, if he has like a new keyword, new effect, something like that, maybe Evelyn's four and five star also work off of that effect, which is why they're not showing it. That is actually a very good call. So if if Fiddlesticks has a new keyword that he's using, potentially they're giving it to Evelyn in her four and five star. Yeah, that, that could be the, the point. 
what cards got changed. Uh, so they swapped out the dragon and they swapped out uh, Prankster, if that's what you mean. New keywords, fearful, fearless, fear, terror. Oh my god, feels like it's going to be Targoth. So yeah, that definitely could be why they're not showing the 4 and 5 star, because otherwise it doesn't really make sense. Like, why hold off on the 4 and 5 star? It doesn't seem like a good idea to hold that back, unless it has something new that, yeah, is going to get spoiled. Can't wait for Shaker reveal tomorrow. Either that, or it was LeBlanc or Nico all along. <laughs> I think Fiddle should be P and Z. We need more P and Z champs. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, if that could be really interesting, if Fiddlesticks has a new gameplay effect and they're adding that into Evelyn, because yeah, right now, the 6-star doesn't change how you play Evelyn, really. You're pretty much playing her the same way. You're just slightly focusing more on your husks, which isn't bad. But if the 4 and 5-star add a little bit of a different gameplay element, that could be really nice. Especially because kind of feels like a bit of a mixed bag when the new fun gameplay is locked behind the 6-stars. Because then, like, yes, you're rewarded for getting it, but at the same time, it feels bad for all the people that can't get the 6-star. Makes sense. New mechanic is present in her four star, but they want to reveal that with Fiddle first. I mean, it makes more sense than just holding it off for no reason. <laughs> Either way, we need to see Evelyn's four and five star before judging her gameplay. I mean, yes, but we also need to see the constellation bonus nodes because those bonus nodes change a lot as well. So even seeing all of their star powers and their entire deck. Like also, we don't know if they've changed any items on the deck as well. There's so many things that can make or break a champion. The other champion is new to LOR. Yeah, the other champion is brand new to the game. Possibly they're stepping back and giving champs additional mana trying something new this time. No. I highly doubt that. The five star very, very likely is still going to be giving the mana, but they might be doing what they did with Kaisa where Kaisa's um, effect, her 5-star, gives her mana and gives an additional effect as well. Like, for her, it's a rank 2 of her 2-star for Kaisa. Maybe they'd be doing something similar here. We need to see Constellation nodes, new level ups, and if Evelyn herself changed. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of information, which we're probably not going to get until we actually get in-game. Which will be exciting. Evelyn will probably have Constellation on her tails. Yes, most likely. It'd be great if the fleeting copy is set to zero. Uh, not necessarily, because if they have effects that scale off of zero cost units, like your Siren Song makes your one cost units 1-1. One, one. Uh, so the husk going to Zero cost could be bad in that regards. Uh, yes, patch notes are going to be tomorrow, and we'll be covering them as soon as they come out. All right, just checking a notification, but nothing, nothing there, sadly. Tomorrow is patch day, or like patch notes. Tomorrow is patch notes day, and then Wednesday is when the actual patch is going live. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, it will be fun, the fact we're actually getting, from all likelihood, the fact that we're actually getting Fiddlesticks is going to be really good. 
because the fact that they're doing another demon, the fact that the names all together, the first initials can spell fiddle, the fact that they had like a poem or song counting from like one to ten, essentially. Yeah, everything's pointing to Fiddlesticks, which hopefully he lives up to the hype. Because Fiddlesticks is an awesome champion. Hopefully it's going to be pretty good. The theory that the 4 and 5 stars not shown because of new effects is nice, but unlikely. I mean, yeah, we have to... Have to hope. <laughs> there might be a bit of copium. If it's Fiddle, then we have a, to find a new meme character that they won't add. I mean, Shaco's a good meme character. <laughs> I think Shaco fits that role perfectly. Uh, they should give Evelyn the ability that when you kill an ally, create a husk with the stats of the killed ally. I can't believe that it was even teased in the counting tease. Let's cope together. <laughs> yeah. When are they going to add Ash? Yeah, it's like they've added her five times or something. With the amount of League champs, the Copium will never end. Yeah, that's very true. Shaco, now, me, now you see me, now you don't. Never seen you, probably never will. Uh, still don't know what that eye thing is on the teaser poster. Uh, that is... It looks like uh, Fiddlesticks has like a passive. I'm not 100% sure what that passive really is because they reworked Fiddlesticks after I quit the game. But... Yeah, he has some sort of passive that drops, like, a an eye in the area. Someone posted on, like, the, the Reddit showing a screen grab from the, the game. And it looked pretty similar, to be honest. But yeah, I would say the eye does look more voidy than demonic. That's true. Uh, they haven't... So the extra levels, when I talked to them in an interview, they said that it was... Mostly going to be effects like increasing your Nexus health, increasing your chance to find uh, epic powers. So effects like this. Your first combat rewards include rare items, 3% chance to find uh, legendary powers, ones that are increasing your Nexus health. Like these sorts of effects is more of what it's going to be. It's not really going to be items on your units or anything that's going to really change how you're playing because they still want like 30 to be kind of the main goal you're going for and then the levels after that to be more like a prestige or paragon system that are rewarding you for playing the game but they don't want the, those levels to feel like required they don't be like oh i have to grind the champion to level 50. at least that's what they made it seem in the interview After reaching level 6 with placing his passive on the ground, Fiddle sweeps the nearby wards by revealing them. I appears on top of the effigy. Yeah, thank you. Alright, let's... I don't think we're going to get anything else revealed today. So I think that's where we'll, we'll call it for uh, the moment. Now, we will be streaming tomorrow. We'll be breaking down everything as far as the patch notes. And then on Wednesday will be trying out all of the the new content but thank you for hanging out with me for a bit still having faith that they're gonna do a good job with evelyn and i look forward to seeing uh fiddlesticks tomorrow but yeah we'll be streaming the same time tomorrow a little bit later like an hour later than we normally do just so that when we go live new content should be revealed shortly anyways thank you all for hanging out hopefully see you later on in the week see ya